laugh at light again. And hello, it's Fo. Welcome back to Turbine City. Last time we were changing over some of our regular sort of standard industrial, our generic industrial, for the more specialist stuff. We'd extended our farming area here, Sterling Park out, to encompass more of the uh, generic industry. And add some uh, fertile ground in. Like before, with adding trees into our other area. It's a sort of opposite situation of this. We should really delete the trees first. So we've got access to the ground. So we can lay down the ground resources. Because the trees count as a natural resource. So we'll get them out of the way first. And then we'll be able to more effectively paint in this fertile land. We'll get this covered in so these uh, farms when they come in have access to the natural resources. That'll hopefully ensure their success. And hopefully with this area extended it's going to push us over the 5,000 tiles we need for our unique building. I think our other areas of uh, generic industry, now that we've got infinite goods turned on, we really don't need them, so we can delete them. We don't need to occupy every single square. We can always replace it with something else these areas with its uh, industries DLC stuff. We could always replace it with more of that. Or we could replace it with offices. I'm not sure about our IT buildings. I get the feeling they might count as a, a luxury, a luxury product. So it might be the case that uh, the infinite goods is taking care of that. We don't really have need for the IT buildings anymore. We need to see how it, how it pans out. Looks like we definitely don't need any of the generic industry that we had before. So it's going to be a large redevelopment switch it all out for specialist stuff or offices or other things I'd rather just tidy everything up get rid of these icons with everybody complaining get our unique buildings unlocked get them placed in get monuments in as well to do that we're going to need to unlock a square that's going to take us down to the seaside so we've got room to place our harbour and things because that's a requirement for getting our unique buildings yeah, it looks like our IT clusters aren't working anymore it's a shame because I love those buildings they're lovely and tall but never mind do what it takes to balance everything out, get rid of all the icons. Hopefully when we unlock the seaside tile as well, and we get things in, it's going to be easier for our uh, tourists to get about, to get into the city. And hopefully that'll mean we get more visitors. So we'll get uh, a bit of terraforming done, get a key set up, so we can place in the harbour buildings road network set up, get it connected to everything else. Maybe get Demand Master on, just to fill up this uh, Sterling Park, so we can definitely get over the 5,000 squares. Drop down a save, then we'll turn on Demand Master. And then maybe just turn the industrial by itself all the way up. 
to get a boost. An industrial building in. If we carry this over that limit. Get enough uh, farming industrial in Sterling Park. So we can unlock our unique building. run for a little bit. Let these guys come in. Yep, so we've unlocked the climate research station finally. It's taking a lot of time, but we've got there. So we get that popped in Sterling Park. Why not? So now we need to do a bit of redevelopment, a bit of terraforming. The coast. Back when I made the map, I didn't understand that you could use keys. Up until this point, and like I'd never used them. So whenever I was putting down a harbour, it was just uh, the same way as I'm putting down the ferry stops. Just sort of thrown on the side. And the terrain was never even. There was always uh, crazy hills going from the harbour down here back up into the rest of the city. And dodgy connections to the train track. So I'm a bit older, a bit wiser now. I'm going to take the time to do the terraform in here. And bring back this sand. Another thing when I made the map, it's a massive brush size and just slapped sand along the coast. Job done. I'm gonna try and make that a little bit more realistic. Just need to try and find the perfect height for the train so it's uh, out of the water, but not so much that uh, it's a stretch that the people can get off the boats and get into the harbour. Below, so it's only just higher than the water. It's a bit of a bit of trial and error, a lot of smoothing things out, trying to find this sort of perfect height just by grabbing heights on the slopes and dragging them out. This seems like a better height. It's more likely going to survive out of the water. And whenever we do any terraforming, obviously the water has to readjust, causes large waves, so we have to sort of let it all spill back out again. I think we've got our height, so it's like our low point, and then we can set up our key wall. Like I say, this is my first time using the key wall, so See how easy it is. Oh, look at that, just as easy as that, eh? The first section is a success. When I see other people using it, it's a disaster. It takes a lot of fiddling. And then there we go. The second section, that's more like what I'm used to seeing. Having to mess around with it to get it to work for you. Maybe we need a little bit more land rather than less land. Yeah, that seems to be the way forward. So we get a fairly large area with the key wall. So we've got plenty of room for a cargo harbour in our harbour. The cargo harbour with the train tracks. And then another harbour. That'll get us everything in we need. Can unlock our unique buildings and then once we've got them placed that'll unlock uh, a few of the monuments for us and once we've got them down that's some of the last uh, vanilla assets in the game we can still go on the uh, workshop if we're feeling short of unique buildings I'm getting the last ones, the last vanilla ones in. Seems pretty straight 
maybe break it up a little bit. If I delete a couple of the sections of the uh, key wall, we'll give ourselves a little bit more room. Generate a little bit more sort of flat land to work with. Always smooth it and bring the hill back a bit. So I'll delete a few sections and then cut into the land a little bit. See if we can make a more interesting shape. I'll keep it kind of square. It's fairly easy. Maybe do a narrower one, or slightly longer. Just try and make an interesting shape across the front rather than it just being a straight line. Now that I think I've got the hang of the key walls, get a little bit creative with it. I think we need to wait until the water fills up. If the land isn't close enough, it won't let you always uh, cut across. tends to jump out when you do a bit of terraforming. Not to worry, it's not like we've got buildings or anything here yet to get flooded, so not too concerned about uh, minor flooding along here. It'll all settle itself out. Plenty of smoothing. I think we should have enough uh, flat land everything we need down here. We do need to find space for the our last unique factory, the shipyard as well. Cut in again over here. Maybe this can be where our shipyard is. Now we're gonna have like a like a natural cove over here. Have rocks and things back in detail afterwards. Let's get more smoothing. So we can smooth the hills out. Rather it came down in a natural sort of beach formation. It was less sort of cliffy. As you can tell I took my time with it. Messing around with the keys took a bit of time and uh, the terraforming takes ages. So I've sped up the footage so we're not taking five episodes just on this. I'll try and make a more interesting shape here. Cut back into the land this way. And even if we don't have any bigger buildings here hang our water processing or sewage processing things off of here. Use the in-game ones rather than the uh, the no blue outflow, outflow pipe. That will uh, lower the water level in our river. But we can always uh, do a bit of terraforming there as well. Ideally where the river is coming out into the sea, the bottom of the river would be just higher than the sea level. Sort of just uh, lower than where we've got our key wall. Then the base of the river would go up towards the source, so we constantly flow downhill. That's not the way I made the map. It's pretty much just like a flat tube, the river. We can always do some work there, try and balance everything back out. And occupy some space, add some more earth to the riverbed. Or we're going to be losing water because we're taking water out of the river but not adding any back in. Can add some rocks and do some terraforming there. Make it look a bit more realistic. So I'll get this. Uh, evened out a little bit more so it's a bit more of a realistic beach area. Take back the sand so it's uh, obviously not around the industrial stuff, not up on a hill. 
but just really along the very edge of the coast. Just have to wait for the water to sort itself out after a big smoothing. Straighten this little bit of key wall out so it doesn't look aligned with the rest of it. I guess we're ready to pop in our assets now. I don't think we need to put in the ferry ones till afterwards. I'm going to have a ferry come down here and connect for be the last stop. So we're going to get in the cargo harbour that has the train line attached to it. It's like a cargo harbour hub. Got a standard cargo harbour. Just need one of these. I need to get two of the sort of pedestrian one, for the passenger harbour. So we'll get two of these in. Get one in this gap will fit nicely. And another one get over here somewhere. We could get further over. Can't remember how much room we need for the. Uh, the shipyard. I want to get in some of the Industries DLC oil assets as well. There's uh, an offshore oil rig that I've never used. Might try to get that asset in. So that should be all our stuff placed. I'll obviously have to get it connected up with water and power and get all the roads connected up. We should have everything unlocked now at least. Get our unique buildings on the go. And their monuments. One of the unique buildings that we unlock by getting this stuff in gets us the medical centre. I haven't checked on the six citizens in a while, but if we've still got a few left, popping in the medical center should uh, fix that. I'm gonna go up the coast here with our underwater power lines. So we're not gonna get in the way of the developments when we get the road network in. So we're hugging the edge of our uh, city boundaries. That'll get the power down to our new area. It's coming together. Looking pretty good. So they come attached to small roads, these assets. There is a mod where you can change the roads. Tidy that one up and move it. It's not quite aligned. The line in it has made it slightly lower on one side. So grab that node and raise it up a little bit with page up. Little details, little tweaks. We need to get the train line hooked up. Once to get hooked up to this node here, we'll try and move our rocks, our little props, rather than deleting them. Best angle, but we'll take it. We've got move it so we can sit and tweak it. Move the nodes up and down, left and right, back and forth. So we find something we're happy with. We can maybe lower the nodes as it goes over the river. It seems to go up slightly. It doesn't really need to. Realistically, you would have less of the train track raised. Trains don't really like slopes. So to have them go up and down off a raised track down into stations all the time, I don't think that's entirely realistic. These two bits of section, sections of uh, track seems to have uh, gone over the top of each other. Try and remake that connection. Sometimes when it's stepped like this, you need to move the nodes back and forth rather than up and down. 
and that will be along the slope for you. But we'll bring as many of these points down a little bit so that it's less of a slope to get down to our cargo harbour. Tend to move everything one node at a time. You can sort of marquee select them and try and move a bunch of them at once. Just have nodes and segments, that should bring everything down at the same time. So I brought down the middle one, never mind. Forget I spoke. But yeah, I tend to move them all individually. Wiggle everything around until it's uh, how I like it. You can see by moving it back and forth, it's sort of sorting out that stepped effect and making it slightly smoother again. If you like the angle, but it's forcing the stepped effect, you can always uh, bring down the road a little bit. Make it kind of even. It says we haven't constructed a harbour. We've got two. Oh, I think what I've done is made multiple cargo harbours instead of the normal one. I should have clicked on it. I can maybe add in our two standard harbours. We do have loads of room here. So we'll get them in, get them hooked up, get our roads connected. I like the way it's just making the bridges for us. Pretty smooth going once you've got the uh, hanger using the key walls. Makes uh, actually placing the assets a lot easier once they're all aligned on a flat surface and straight. Try and get this corner slightly better, slightly more rounded. The way it was cut in the corner it wasn't quite perfect, it was annoying me. I'm gonna try and get a, a better curve here. Again, it's a little bit fiddly. I don't know if I need to, to cut away some of the land or add more. Fiddle with it a little bit. Oh, that's the wrong height. Choose a lower height. Bring it down rather than up. Let's see if this is going to do it. Oh, yeah, much better. Love it. So, these sort of inlets, we can use them for uh, water outflow pipes, if we're not going to put anything else in them. Obviously makes it look more interesting. But we can have it be functional. Maybe try a few of those uh, sort of garbage cleaners that clean up water pollution. Maybe pop them in there as well. I don't think we need these extra cargo ones. Maybe move these, use the space along at the end where we've got the second harbour uh, for our unique factory. Looks like it's not going to let us delete the roads while we're moving the harbour, but it's not going to let us cancel moving the harbour either. It's pretty strange, I've not seen that before. It's unusual behaviour. Guess I'll throw that over anywhere, get out of the way. Starting to notice odd behaviours. I'm clicking on things multiple times. I think I've clicked on it and it hasn't sort of clicked, hasn't registered. I swear it's not just me, it's not the mouse. It's definitely the game. I'm clicking on things, but it's not clicking on them. Mildly infuriating. Also, our underwater power cables are complaining that they're underwater. <laughs> so, yeah, strange things are happening. Other than that, everything's looking good. We've run out of time for today, so we'll come back next time and uh, add a few more things in here. 
Until then, take it easy. I'll see you in the next one.